Hey guys, Spencer here. This is gonna be a little bit different of a video. Um, a few of you were asking me about my studio, where I work, and so I just wanted to give you a quick tour today um, and tell you a little bit about this space. So this is actually my third or fourth studio space that I've had since starting Sketch-A-Day. Um, I've moved houses a few times, um, gone through some life changes, and so this studio here is the latest um, and perhaps the smallest space, maybe with the exception of when I was living in an apartment for a minute. Um, but I've been able to plan out some things and, and make the most of it. First thing I want to point out is this is a really small space. Um, as I'm walking around here, you can kind of see I've got these walls. Um, there's a window that I've covered up. I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, but this is kind of my general workspace right here. So this window actually faces the street. So this is my makeshift soundproofing. I got some thick sponge from Home Depot. And so that's how I am trying to deaden a little bit of the sound from outside. Um, I, it's probably something better I can do, but for now it does the trick and it works and it was only like 20 bucks. And with my workspace, I've got a Mac Pro that I use if I'm working on any intense design projects. Here's a soundproofing wall that I actually just added this morning or soundproof panels, I should say. Um, here's my microphone, added that stand. I'll talk about the cameras in just a sec, but this is kind of my main workspace. So when you see those videos, this is where I'm working. Um, I have a printer underneath and that's the best I could do right now because it's actually a big printer. And again, the space is somewhat limited. So I've got my Mac Pro, um, a few things here, prepping for a video. I've got some headphones just in case I need to use them. Um, this thing I just picked up recently, it's a Roland VO2 HD video mixer. Um, I'm also going to be testing out a new piece of hardware that should be coming this week that should help me with my videos. But this is what I use for my live stream controls. I've also got this Elgato Camlink. So this allows me to take the output from this mixer plug it into my laptop, which is also connected to this lovely uh, Yeti microphone. I'll put links to all the equipment if you're interested in getting some of this yourself in the video description. But there's my microphone um, that I use for recording as well as broadcasts. So as a designer, I like to surround myself with inspiration, resources, materials, and so forth that I can use. And so behind me are my bookshelves. And here I've got just a selection of books, reference, um, inspiration that I like to use. On top of the bookshelves, I've got my printer, some old boxes, and some products that I've designed or worked on in the past, or products that I've gotten for myself. So um, that's kind of where I keep, I guess, a little bit of a living portfolio of things that I've worked on. And yes, that is a bottle of lotion, you know, can't have those ashy hands on video. So right here, this is just a general storage closet. It's a little bit messy right now. I'm in the process of organizing, so that's why it looks the way it does. Um, this is my door, I've got a whiteboard. My friend Crystal came by. Um, and this is my design entity. So when I have tasks, I put them there and that just helps keep me straight. Here we've got controls, remote controls for my three lights. So these are some Viltrox VL200T light panels. I like them because you can adjust the color temperature pretty easily. Um, so if I want warm, cool lighting, that kind of thing, it's pretty easy to do. I've got a hue light bulb here that I use for just some effect in the background. So, I, and I can change that color to whatever I want. Um, I try to post the sketches that I've worked on for the videos on these panels. So. It works as a sound reduction panel, but also works well to pin up my sketches, as you can see. And lighting's super important for me in my videos because one, I'm dark skinned, but two, um, I like being able to show up on the video and have control. So I've got my main light, I've got my overhead and a key light. The hue light kind of functions as a backlight in the video. Um, so if I need uh, some rim lighting or something like that, it's pretty easy for me to set that up. So these remotes are pretty handy. Um, they allow me to control my lights. Uh, even if I'm not at the light, um, there's settings like temperature, brightness, and so forth. Like I said, remote, I can turn this light on or off. I can adjust the brightness of this light by pushing this button like so. You can see that's changing. 
and so forth. I'm going to keep this all the way up. Um, I can also change the color temperature, make it warmer, or make it cooler, more neutral, and so forth. And I also have this remote so that it has Velcro on the back so I can stick it to the wall and get to it whenever I want. Again, above here I have just some products that I've worked on or designed. So some headphones that I did, um, Space Monkey, which is a storage device um, that's a home security concept, and then some toys that I like as well right there. On to the video cameras. Um, yes, I have a few cameras and I'll explain why and what I use those for. The iPhone's great, but it's really not the camera that I would use typically for my videos because of the um, lack of control that I might have with the iPhone. Overhead here, I have two cameras. I've got my old camera that I used to use to record my videos, but it's actually a video camera. Um, and then I have this Canon M50 set up on these Manfrotto, Manfrotto magic arms. So I've got two friction magic arms connecting, attach some plumbing pipe to my ceiling here so I can clamp onto. Um, but this allows me to set up the overhead so that I can get the shot of what I'm drawing down here. So the things about the cameras or holding the cameras to the ceiling, it's these magic arms. And they're pretty cool. Um, they're expensive, uh, just so you know. They're each about $100, but um, if I, uh, let's see if I, can, there we go. If I undo this cam, you can see there's full articulation here. So um, I can position this. This one I have have this insert to clamp to the side of a table, just in case I need to, but comes with this tightening mechanism as well as the camera bracket. So I can attach a camera clamp to a table and position, or clamp to a pole, whatever I want to do. And attached to that, on the hot shoe mount, I have my Viltrox light with the camera. So this one allows me to record in 4K, so that's why I got this one. Um, so if I need to zoom in, show any details, that kind of thing, it's pretty easy to do. Right now the access door is open because I was editing um, SD card batteries in there. Battery life's not great on this camera. And the recording limit is 30 minutes of continuous recording. So it's really not a video camera for streaming. So that's why I have this camera here set up. And as you can see, there's a cable attached to that, which routes down ultimately to my video mixer. I am going to be testing out a new video mixer that allow me to do more cameras. Um, I do want to do an over shoulder camera for my live stream so you can kind of see a little bit closer up view of what I'm doing. So that's something I'm gonna be adding soon. So I also have this guy right here, which is close to the mic, but just out of frame of my main A camera. We'll talk about that guy in just a sec. Um, but again, HDMI cable connecting to my mixer box so I can do, at least with streaming, two videos now, picture in picture, um, switch between, you can see my face and see me drawing. So streaming camera, streaming camera, recording camera, microphone. And this microphone is pretty great because it has a bunch of different modes that you can set up. It's a super cardioid mic, um, but I can also record in stereo and so forth. Um, full control there. And I have the benefit of being able to connect via USB. So it's a pretty nice microphone I got and I got it refurbished. Most of my stuff I do get refurbished if I can help it because a lot of times that just means someone bought the product and is returning it. So let's talk about the A camera and kind of the setup in front of me when I'm recording a video. So when you see the talking head on screen or I turn and look at you guys, this is the camera I'm looking at. This camera is a Canon EOS M50. It's pretty cheap. Well, relatively speaking cheap, it's about $500. Um, you can get it cheaper if you get it refurbished. Um, it's a pretty good camera. It has some drawbacks, limitations. As you can see, I have the flip out screen here. Um, and eventually I got this monitor. It's not the best monitor, so I'm actually gonna return it and get a different one. Um, I say it's not the best because, let's see if I can turn this on here. It is, it's just kinda janky. It has this haze, um, but you can see the video, well, I haven't uh, connected it here. I should reconnect it, but um, this allows me to mirror what's on the camera. Now, if I look at this camera, what's gonna happen is you'll see my eyes look off the screen. So I got this one so that it looks like I'm looking directly at the camera or just above. So to kind of see yourself when you're recording just to make sure you're not, you know, looking too goofy. Okay, so there's the camera with the screen connected and it's a pretty, pretty decent camera. Um, like I said, the screen's a little bit wonky, so 
I'm gonna swap that out. This camera is great for uh, travel, taking it around. Um, like I said, it does record 4K. The lens is decent. I mean, this is not an SLR low light monster camera, um, but it does the job and it does it well. So just a couple more things, and these are just accessories or things that I find helpful when I'm recording um, and just things that have kind of helped me set up the space. So behind my camera here, I have a nice power strip mounted. I'm actually gonna swap this one out for a bigger, wider power strip or longer, um, just as I have a lot of things connected, you know, have to connect the camera, screen, light. Um, this camera here is actually connected uh, over here as well as this one. Um, and I do have a power strip under my desk, but um, perhaps I could mount one to the ceiling, but not really ready to do that yet. So um, that's kind of my power management. I mentioned the printer already um, and a couple power strips, things like that. There's my messy under desk. So this tool bin's nice because it's open, allows me to just kind of have things at the tip of my fingers that I need. Right now it's empty because I just finished organizing the space a little bit better. So you've probably noticed this thing in my videos. Um, it's just a little Ikea organizer thing. And I like it because it has these big deep drawers. And so here are my Ziploc bags filled with my tools. Why Ziploc bags? Well, if you want your tools, markers, pens, whatever, all that stuff to last long, you kind of have to store them in an airtight container or they will dry out. So that's something you want to pay attention to. In addition to this storage unit, obviously I have a little tray here full of my pens and so on, pencil sharpener, pins, more sketches. I've got this little magnetic caddy for some uh, whiteboard markers and so forth. And then up here is just general shelf storage. So typically this is out of frame. You guys can't really see it, but it does allow me to kind of just chuck some stuff out of sight if I need to. Um, sometimes when you're trying to just move quickly and record a bunch of videos or get a bunch of content out, it's nice to just have a place to stash some things out of frame. This side of the shelves, we have sketchbooks and then a few other reference books as well. Um, and then this is kind of the communications nerve center of my entire house actually. Um, cable modem, Wi-Fi router, switch. I've got a Philips Hue hub. Um, this is a, a NAS, NAS uh, unit. It's a little bit uh, wonky right now, so I've got to fix that. And then there's a power strip just behind it. I got some questions from some of you about books, um, and I get those questions a lot like, what book should I buy? What should I do? First of all, I'm working on a book, so stay tuned. That's the one you should buy, but I'll show you some that I like. A lot of the books I have are like in the case of these over here, some Star Wars books, uh, District 9, um, just for inspiration. There's also things like, hey, here's a book about icons. Here's some furniture. This is kind of my furniture section here. I do make furniture as well in my spare time, so I have some books to help. Uh, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro book. There's a Darren Quash book called Inkworks right there. Um, Kim, Kim Jung-e book there and there. Um, some logo books and so forth. So a lot of these books are really just inspiration for me or reference. Here's one about manufacturing for industrial design, uh, creative workshopping. I think that's a sketchbook there. And of course, like I said, these are some of my sketchbooks and so forth. If you are looking for a decent book on how to draw, I recommend How to Draw by Scott Robertson. I'll post a link in the video description so you can check that out, but it's a pretty solid overview of some basic drawing techniques and some advanced that you can use to help your drawings. So that's pretty much it, guys. This is the space I work in. Um, again, as far as size goes, I can touch wall to wall if I stretch my hands out that way. And then this way, probably twice as wide. So it's really not very big, but I've been able to efficiently kind of set it up so that, um, you know, it works for me and it works for my videos. So thanks for joining me on the tour. If you have any other questions, let me know. I will be posting the full list of equipment and gear. And um, if I miss something, just let me know. But that's basically the studio and we'll be back with more videos soon. Love you guys. Well, thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on alerts. You can find me on the socials, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff, or just Google me, I'm easy to find. But Instagram at sketchaday.com, facebook.com slash sketchaday, and daily sketches on Twitter.
thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Sketch-A-Day. Probably on that camera and that one.